Hello and welcome to Body Bags. My name is James and I'm your Sunday night reviewer. And today I'll be reviewing a film that I caught on Netflix uh, for a second time. I saw this when it first came out. And um, I was doing a lot of travelling yesterday and had a, uh, a very long layover in Amsterdam, Schiphol Airport. So I found myself a quiet corner and watched, re watched The Invitation. The um, Karen Kasuma film, I believe. Uh, <clears throat> I think she has done other films. Um, was it Aeon Flux and Jennifer's Body? Um, I have not seen Aeon Flux, not heard good things. Uh, Jennifer's Body, I saw once, maybe when it first came out, quite a long time ago. Yeah. I didn't really enjoy it so much, but maybe should give it another watch again soon. But The Invitation... Well, we follow Will, our main character, which is probably the biggest name acts from this. It's Logan Marshall Green. And he's going to a dinner party with his girlfriend. Uh, we find out that the dinner party has actually been hosted by his ex-wife and her new boyfriend or husband, partner. And anyway... Uh, She's kind of disappeared off the face of the planet for the past two years and she's invited him and a bunch of their closest friends around to theirs for a meal. Now she lived in the house where Will, Logan Marshall Green's character, lived uh, beforehand. So yeah, immediately there's like issues with him going back there and we learn very quickly that the very big issue is that they had a child together who actually died in, at, at the house in a, in a tragic accident. So the party, dinner party, it's not party, yeah, it, uh, it gets going. Um, there's an odd feeling, obviously from our main character of Will, but everyone's kind of trying to gel back together, thinking the situation is kind of weird. And um, yeah, strange things start to happen, occur. Well, maybe not so much the others, but Will, who's kind of having a very hard time dealing with the situation of his, like, obviously, this is the house where he used to live. This is a house where he lost his son. It's the house of his ex-wife with a new partner who disappeared for two years and now they're suddenly back and inviting him around. And he, he, he's struggling with it. I mean, you kind of don't know the time scale of when he lost his son, but you have a feeling it's only like a few years ago. And it, you can see that he's still struggling to come to terms with this. So above all of this, he, his like heightened sense of paranoia and everything, he's trying to figure everything out. And he's watching his ex and her new partner very closely. And they're doing strange things that he thinks is not quite normal. Um... Like they don't have their phone connected, they don't have a, um, there's no phone signal where they are really. Um, they've invited this, there's a girl when they get there who's really strange and then another guy comes later, another friend of theirs, famous actor, um, I can't remember his name, he's one of the suspected killers in the Zodiac, but the, um, Fincher film, I can't remember his name, he's been in quite a few things, kind of a gentle giant character, but as I said, this film keeps, we follow uh, Will, uh, he keeps taking us down the path, and then the path will change, and then it comes to a dead end, and we'll reevaluate, and then something happens where we go back onto that path again, and then again, stop and reevaluate and then you're back onto this path and he becomes convinced that they're in a cult and then you become convinced they're in a cult but then you're like no they're not no but yes they are but no they're not and you're just trying to figure out what's going on through this whole film whether it's just his paranoia trying to deal with the psychological and emotional pressures of being in this situation or if there really is actually something happening and then everything kind of reveals itself rather, really rather well 
in the third act. Um, so the story is is really thoughtfully crafted, and this is a contained horror. It's all in all in this pretty much. Well, it is. It's all in this house, um, which is a very cool house actually, and it's um, it's an unusual. It's not your stereotypical kind of layout. It's quite a nice house, but it's kind of it doesn't feel big and expansive. It feels claustrophobic, and it's very dark, and it's kind of you're on edge with him because of how he's acting, and you're kind of you really get dragged into the story and his acting with this. I mean. The, the emotion that he's having to go through with the acting, he, he does a, a phenomenal job with this. I mean, this is, the supporting cast are really, really good. I, I can't believe I can't remember his name, especially the um, the friend of the ex-wife and the new partner when he comes. He uh, He's, whenever you see him in films, he's great. And he has, yeah, has some of his script and he has like, it's a bit of a monologue at one point that's explaining kind of what happened in his life because they kind of they they kind of admit that they are in a cult but it's not the cult that will is thinking it's um it's a cult it's not a cult it's a, it's a group of people and they're there to help grieve together rather than grieving alone because there's different things happen in people's life obviously will it's he's lost his son so that's obviously affected his wife and then the same with her new partner he lost his wife and I'm not going to give it away how, how it kind of unfolds whether it's him or whether it's them but like I said this is a beautifully crafted film yeah it's it's intense it's heavy you can feel it when you're watching it you're completely engrossed in it and like I said this is only the second time I watched this I just found it back on Netflix I do need to pick this up on blue because I think it was in my top 10 of whether it's 2015 or 2016 whenever it was actually had this wide release it was in my top 10 possibly top 5 of the year and if anything it's gone up a little bit it's oh, it's, it's a captivating film yeah yeah and with the performance of Logan Marshall Green, the supporting cast. It's such a solid film. Yeah, I highly recommend this. And like I said, I don't really. Uh, what I've told you is enough. Whether you figure out if you'd like that sort of thing or not, I don't want to give all the twists and the main um, reveal at the end away. So, I actually highly, highly recommend this film. I think I'm coming in at about a nine, nine and a half out of ten on this one. Like I said, it's, it's it's very beautifully crafted film. Like the visuals, the characters, the story, the scripts are like it's it's just a great film, and I I highly recommend it. And um, well, that's the end of my review. Uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all next week. Thank you. Good night.